The Tesla Fremont factory is the highest producing car plant in North America, manufacturing around 300,000 Tesla Model Y vehicles annually, the world's best selling car. This immense production demand subjects the factory equipment to a high number of cycles, making it vulnerable to fatigue failure. In this video, we will discuss the fatigue subjected on the carrier skids that carry the body in white. The body in white is the metal skeleton of the car. It weighs around 500 kilograms and it is built on top of carrier skids. Each of the 100 skids endures roughly 3,000 cycles per year, and at times, yielded skids have caused problems, raising a critical question. Do they fail due to fatigue or unexpected outlier loads? So let's dive into the math and understand if these skids can sustain such loads and how long will it take before the skids need to be replaced. Onto the calculations, here we have the analysis of one of the two skids that are used in the process where we have support forces and two transfer and boyer points which will treat them as reaction forces. The skid has a square structure 2 by 2 inches where it is hollow with wall thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, assumptions as the dynamic external forces affect the system, just bending forces, there's one cycle per skid. Uh, simple skid geometry and we're assuming that the bar fails before the supports. We then calculate support forces FS1 and FS2 using the car as a system where the full weight of the car is 250kg using sum of forces in Y and taking the moment of point A. After the support forces were calculated, we switched the system to be the skid to be able to calculate the transfer conveyor points, we would treat them as reaction forces where we did the sum of forces in Y and moment on A. We drew our force diagrams to see how the forces are distributed along the skid, then did the same for our moment diagram which let us know how or where our max moment is, which is at point C from the above FED. We then calculated sigma max at point A of the drawing to the right, where we added our max moment from before and solved for the total moment inertia and C, which is the distance from our neutral axis to point A, which is one inch. Our sigma min is zero since our minimum moment is at zero when there's no car weight on the skid. And then we calculate our sigma mean and alternating, which is sigma max divided by two. Now we calculate endurance limit for IC for, uh, 4140 steels at 425 degree. From table 821, the SUT is 1250 MPA and the SE prime is 625 MPA. Since our survey is hollow, so Ka is calculated as 0 0.3746, and the steel is rectangular in shape. And using the equation from table 63, the equivalent diameter DE is negative 1.07, and Kb is calculated as 0 0.835. Since the load is bending, uh, Kc is 1, and uh, Kd is 1, assuming room temperature, and Ke is 0 0.702 for reliability of 99.99%. And so Se is calculated as 137.24 MPA. And using sigma A, sigma N, and SUT we got above, we can calculate a sigma AR. From after this, we can calculate a constant A, B, and F, which allow us to find a number of cycle to failure as 56,000. And the factor of safety is 0 0.49. So as shown, the skids are expected to fail after 56,000 cycles. And given that each skid goes through 3,000 cycles each year, it's expected that the skids will fail after 18 years. What this tells us is that if skids are failing after three years, it is likely due to other unexpected factors such as forklift operator error, or other scenarios. Knowing this, engineers would have to root cause these issues and finally put an end to skid failures. This is exactly what happened at the Tesla Freeman factory, demonstrating that topics such as fatigue failure are present and have to be taken into consideration in many real-world scenarios.